Hi, welcome back. Uh, glad you're still with me. And we're getting down into a little bit more physical reality here. Now, what you see in front of me is a very sad sight, I know. It's a, a dandy little flying wing model that's had its wings clipped. And you might be thinking right now, Raul, I thought you said you had that stall spin problem solved, and what happened to the wing? Well, this is what happens when the battery pack gets disconnected while you're on final approach. How it happened, I don't know. No power, no control, straight into the ground. Uh, went straight into an area that was essentially asphalt, and I'm surprised it survived as well as it did, but right where the uh, controls are high loads and you lose the wingtips. Uh, I didn't rebuild this one. I, I had other places I wanted to go. I, I was very happy with how this one flew. Flew perfectly, absolutely spin-proof, and uh, I was ready to move forward with a quarter-scale version. This is one-eighth scale of the uh, design that I'm currently building. As you see, I did a lot of tough testing on this. Uh, you can go look at uh, other videos that are online that shows how these tufts are behaving in flight. You can begin to see some of those uh, spanwise flow issues, how stalls occur. Uh, but I thought I'd use this model because it still has an Elevon on it over here and I could use that to do a little bit of explanation. So here you see I have an Elevon. Uh, it appears to go all the way out to the tip of the wing, but actually there's another whole panel that went out here to the end. Uh, so the Elevon actually ends here before the end of the wing. And um, in fact, this would have been right about where the winglet is, and then there's a panel beyond that. But you can see I'm using basically a rectangular Elevon format on here, and uh, I was using a little bit of differential, but not a lot. Uh, almost as much up elevator uh, available, up Elevon available as down. No flaps on this model. And this model really was uh, spin proof. You could put the Elevon full up like this, and the nose would go way up like this, and you could literally fly around like this and just waddle through the air, and uh, you could hit control the other way, and you could wallow through some turns, and it would never break into a spin. It is fabulous to fly. Uh, because you really couldn't get yourself in trouble. Uh, so you could drag this thing as slow as you wanted through ridge lift or thermals without worrying about dropping a wingtip. And, and I was thrilled with my success that I had finally achieved that capability. Yet this model will loop and roll and, and do all the other basic maneuvers. Uh, and it took a little while to get there. But here I had a configuration I knew absolutely worked. Proved it with the uh, video of the tough testing and by flying it. Thrilled, going to move on to the quarter scale configuration. Uh, but before I go and talk about that, let's talk a little bit about uh, double taper configurations. This is a straight taper. Let's talk double taper because you see it on some of the rigid wing hang gliders that are out right now, and you'll see double or multiple taper on standard sailplanes. And let's talk just for a moment about that, and, and then we can put that uh, configuration the rest. So here's another eighth scale model that I did uh, that shows uh, more of the configuration and how it was set up, just like the straight taper one, except the uh, taper here was slightly different. It's not as steeply tapered here as the uh, other one. And then there's a steeply tapered section out here at the tip. Uh, same type of Elevon, with the exception of I uh, made this Elevon such that it didn't run all the way out to where the fence is, the fence and winglet. Uh, if you've uh, watched the other model fly, you know that there's a big winglet that sits up on top here for uh, yaw stability purposes. And, and then it mounts, the, the winglet mount is, also serves as a bit of a fence. Actually, the whole thing's a fence, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. But here's the Elevon. And uh, the theory behind this was I'll keep the Elevons inboard, I'll make them a little bit larger so that there's enough control authority as if they were all the way out at the tip, but I'm keeping them inboard so that any spanwise flow that is set up by the Elvon going up, so as the Elvon comes up and we start to get a bunch of spanwise flow going out this way, the winglet stops it. And it goes back straight. In fact, that's what I'm doing here with this open section that's right here. This open section keeps the flow going straight like this. It's right up against the fence in the winglet. You've got flow going straight. Elvon comes up, and the flow's trying to get out this way, but there is an aerodynamic barrier of flow going this way. So all of this helps stop the spanwise flow. 
Um, why the double taper? Double taper gives you a little bit more performance. Uh, you get closer to the elliptical lift distribution. But its big contribution is yaw stability. So we got the, uh, you can think of yaw stability as the angle of the quarter cord line and how far back it's swept. The more you sweep it back, the better the yaw stability. So what we have here is we got a quarter cord line coming in this way, and then it angles back and goes off this way. And this configuration will be much more yaw stable and have much better yaw damping. And that's why you see it on some of the rigid wing hang gliders that are out there right now. I think the Atos or Atos, however they say it, actually has a double, uh, triple taper on it. And, and you'll see it angle out like this. And what they're doing is they're simulating uh, or approximating, I should say, an elliptical uh, shape to the wing, which would be higher performance. And uh, they're actually using uh, spoilers for roll control there. Uh, they're actually ruining the lift on the wing uh, to cause that wing to drop and roll into a turn. And they have multiple steps of dihedral in it, uh, so they're essentially doing dihedral turns. They create drag, the, the wing yaws, it has dihedral, so the dihedral picks up one wing, and then you've ruined lift on this wing, and that wing goes down, and you get a nice rolling effect that way. And you'll note on that design, uh, I'll put a picture up of it here somewhere, that one of the spoilers is perpendicular to the flow, and that's to help prevent aggravating the spanwise flow condition. So I do something similar on this wing and go out and test it. Uh, same as the other one, same elevon configuration, same winglet configuration, go out, test it, and it has horrible spin. It's just awful. Uh, so... Back to the tough testing. Put tufts on this side. Get my camera mounted up here. You can go look at videos of this one flying. And what you'll see is that as the spanwise flow builds up here and the tufts begin to go out and then they separate and you get this stall that builds up in here. Well, out here, they're straight. They're doing good. Everything's working, going straight. In fact, these are straight here too. But then, little by little, the spanwise flow builds up out here at the tip. And we begin pushing that flow off the tip, and the tip stalls. And the tip stalls, uh, because this high amount of taper that's here causes that spanwise flow to reform before you get out to the end of the wing. And as you come up to a higher angle of attack, higher, 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 that spanwise flow gets worse and worse and worse, even though there's no control surface out here. And you end up tip stalling, and you're back into a spin. I thought, well, I'm stuck. <laughs> no double taper. I'm just going to work with a straight taper and um, work with the twist that's in the wing and modify the twist pattern so that I can stay close to the elliptical lift distribution uh, that this approximates, uh, yet without the double taper. So I don't have the uh, aggravation of the spanwise flow problem by the double taper, yet maintaining the performance. Okay, so was very curious about what was going on during this whole process. Uh, and I went back to the original one and started playing around with the winglets. Now, remember, I told you that the winglet was mounted essentially here, and there would have been another one out here. And I thought, maybe this idea of putting the winglets inboard is really not working. It's not helping as much as it should. It's not doing its job. So I, on this model, I'd actually, uh, and I'll use this other one to reference, I put on two of these winglet mounts on each wing. One inboard here and one out at the tip. And I flew the model that way so that I could move the winglets around. So I put the winglets all the way out at the tip on this configuration, the one that I know is spin-proof. Put the winglets all the way out at the tip. Guess what? Spins again. I was like, wow, okay. So the inboard winglets acting as a fence there are really helping prevent the spanwise flow and stopping the spin. How do I confirm that? Well, I made a very interesting configuration change. I put one winglet all the way out on one wing tip, and the other winglet I actually flew inboard, like on this one. So it's an asymmetrical configuration. This wing's got the winglet inboard. This one's got the winglet all the way out at the tip. And you know what? <laughs> very interesting. It would only spin in one direction. It would spin in the direction towards the, the, the winglet that's all the way out the wingtip. 
no matter how hard I tried, no matter what control movements you would use, it would not spin in the other direction. And that's when I really concluded that mounting the winglets inboard is the right thing to do. Uh, the effect was huge. This model went from a pleasure to fly to a pleasure to fly as long as you don't go slow in one direction. Uh, the conclusion is every design that you see with the winglets out at the tips is wrong. That's not wrong, wrong. I mean, they fly, they're out of tip. It's not as good as it could be. Uh, the better answer is to make the winglets a little bit larger and move them inboard because then they'll act as fences, stop that spanwise flow, and help prevent the stall spins. So this concept, it just seems logical. I got rudders on here. I want as much moment arm as I can get. I'm going to put them all the way out at the tip. Well, they're not helping relative to the stall spin problem at all. Uh, so you're better to move them inboard, use them as a fence, also, in addition to being rudders, and what you can do is you can make them a little bit larger to make up for the uh, smaller moment arm, and you can also move them further aft. And moving them further aft helps restore some of that moment arm and some of the control effectiveness. And those two small changes will not uh, increase the drag very much, and you gain back that effectiveness of stopping the spanwise flow. So, first lesson out of all these videos, Winglets inboard. Okay. Second lesson out of all of this. Don't run your control surfaces all the way out to the tip. As you saw on my original wing, and I've explained, Elevon up, shoves the flow out across the uh, wing, and if I don't want the flow going spanwise out at the tip here, I better not put a control surface out here. If I put a control surface here and tilt it up, I'm just going to cause the flow really aggravate it and just shove it off the wingtip and I'm going to have that problem back again. So winglets inboard, control surfaces inboard. And you might be thinking, Raul, can't I just put ailerons out here and put the elevator inboard? Because you're talking about up elevon, flying slow in a thermal, you got your elevators up and you're shoving the flow off the tip. And you know, basically that's correct. You can put the elevators inboard, put the ailerons outboard, much less of a problem. However, when you roll into a turn, suppose I'm thermaling in this direction, and I'm having to make adjustments to my roll control, well, the elevon, or in the case that we're talking about, the aileron, is still going up and down. And there might be a case where you're slowed up like this, and you're, you're getting kicked out of the thermal, so you hit the aileron again to push yourself back into the thermal. Now you have the control surface deflected up, and you're shoving the flow off the wing. So even though it's only an aileron out at the tip, there will be flight configurations and flight modes where that aileron gets deflected up at just the wrong time. You push the flow out along the wingtip, bam, stall spin. So uh, really best, put the control surfaces, however you want to do them, separated elevator and aileron, or just elevons, put them in board a little bit. Uh, this is what, maybe 25% of the span. Put them in here and just make them a little bit larger. Make them larger in order to regain the control effectiveness that you would have had if they were out at the tip. And making that control surface larger, no significant change in performance of the wing. So that's a good solution too. Now, let's go, let me get these out of the way, and we'll go talk about the current configuration, where it stands right now. Okay, let me get these guys out of the way. They were fun to talk to, and you can see that accidents happen to the best of us.